Hi, so my name is Dr. Emily Casanova, and I have been asked the question, what is a genetic bottleneck, and why does an ancient Neanderthal bottleneck matter for modern humans? So first off, the term genetic bottleneck refers to what occurs genetically when a population becomes unusually small in number. Um, the smaller the numbers of a breeding population, the greater the decrease in genetic variability of that population as a whole. Now, why does that matter? Mutations inevitably occur every new generation. Sometimes they're neutral and they're inconsequential, and so that's not a problem if they're inherited by the next generation, but sometimes they can be harmful. Very harmful mutations tend to get weeded out in any size population, big or small, because they tend to have severe effects on the health of the organisms that harbor them. So fertility, for instance, can be severely affected, and that ultimately prevents them from having offspring, or the mutation may not even be conducive to life, and the zygote or the embryo dies pretty early on. Now back to Neanderthals. We can tell from the Neanderthal genomes we've managed to recover in sequence that they had very low genetic diversity, and that indicates that the available breeding population was very genetically similar to itself. Basically, genetically, they all kind of looked like cousins of each other. And so for the same reason that most modern human cultures no longer condone marriage between close family members, being too similar to your mate increases the likelihood that diseases, especially recessive ones that you need to inherit two copies in order to develop the condition, these can be passed down to the next generation as well as spread faster through a smaller population. So in effect, mildly harmful mutations can travel around small populations as if they're neutral. This is the reason small population numbers are always a concern for modern day endangered species. The smaller the breeding population, the less robust the species, which may subsequently put it in further danger for extinction. And as you would expect, Neanderthals had many of those mildly harmful mutations because of their genetic bottlenecks. So in turn, they may have passed some of those down to us when we intermixed. And then as Homo sapien numbers climbed eventually, many of those genetic variants would have been weeded out just by sheer probability. Um, that's one thing that larger population numbers are really great for. But we may still nevertheless have a few of those harmful remnants hanging around our genomes even today. Now, it's certainly possible that some of these could be playing roles in some types of autism today, but I suspect probably even more so some of these mutations may be influencing rare diseases like inborn errors of metabolism. Sometimes these are also just referred to as rare metabolic diseases. Um, that, is, that is different from the metabolic disease that you may have heard in association with stuff like diabetes. That's, that's a different thing. Um, or maybe even possibly in association with neurodegenerative diseases um, that often have risk factors in some of these metabolic genes. Um, and these genes are often targets for these types of harmful mutations that we see in small populations. Now, I won't go too much into that topic since that honestly could be several videos in its own right, but I hope that gives you a clearer idea of what a genetic bottleneck is and why it's undoubtedly influenced our cousins and Neanderthals and possibly even us as hybrids. So thank you for asking um, about the genetic bottleneck of Neanderthals, and I look forward to continuing to answer more Neanderthal and autism-related questions. Thanks.